We now have, you may have heard rumors, a new administration coming in <laughs> under Donald Trump. Uh, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> and there may be some changes uh, coming up. And one has to think about the possibility of a different approach to alternative fuel. Uh, could that affect your plans on electric vehicles? No, and I think first and foremost is because when consumers drive electrified vehicles, they really like them. The issue is getting the cost down. The issue is, you know, where's the infrastructure for full battery electric vehicles to charge? And that's why uh, we're, we think long term this is the right play. We want to make sure, though, that working with the government, that the legislation for fuel economy doesn't get ahead of itself. Because when legislation gets ahead of the limitations, like getting the cost down or getting the infrastructure in place, consumers pay a price, companies pay a price. And we want to make sure it's done in the right cadence and right timing. So that leads us perfectly into what you would like to see out of the new administration. What's on your wish list? One thing we've talked about before is the midterm review. Mid -term review. You. Coming out 2018 now. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you hoping for, expecting out of that? Well, we were, uh, when we agreed to the new fuel economy standards back in 2011, we were agreeing for 2025. It was unprecedented. And part of the deal was that we would have a midterm review in 2018. Look at the original assumptions around the cost of fuel, technology, adoption from customers of this new technology, impact on jobs. And we were really disappointed that the EPA decided to short circuit that review, uh, which we wanted to be a data-driven review. And uh, you know they, they, they just mandated it. So we're looking forward in the new administration to talking about this and talking about a new time for a midterm review. So again, we can give customers the best fuel economy, but make sure we do it in the right uh, cadence of legislation. So what other regulatory uh, changes might you anticipate or at least be talking to them about? Well, when we look at from a policy standpoint, a couple of things that, uh, that we're proactively talking with the transition team. And this is a discussion. We've had very good working relationships with every administration and policymakers through the years. And what we'd like to see is free and fair trade agreements. Uh, we want to see regulation and regulatory policies that are, are, are more reflective of market realities. And we really want to see corporate tax reform. I mean, here in the U.S., amongst developed nations, we have the highest corporate tax reform, and we think that would be good for the economy. Uh, free and fair. Uh, those are two things that sometimes are at war with one another, mm -hmm. at least in people's minds. Uh, where do you see unfairness right now? Do you see unfairness, for example, in our relations under NAFTA with Canada and Mexico? Do you see unfairness with China? Do you see instances of unfairness? Well, I do think when you look at NAFTA, it has, uh, it has improved the competitiveness of the entire continent. And the supply chains, for example, in the automotive business are deeply integrated between Canada and Mexico and the U.S. And that integration supports a lot of good American jobs. So I think as we think about this, our, our, our trade agreements with, with China, et cetera, the most important thing is first let's look at the facts. Let's look at the facts. Let's understand what does it mean for each country's economy and make sure that it's fair. And I think uh, we're looking forward to that, those kind of conversations going forward. Ford has been in Mexico for many years. 90 years. Over you have, 90 you years. have a lot of employees down there. Correct. If you look forward in the future, four years from now, do you think you'll have as many employees in Mexico as you do today? Well, we have a number of uh, manufacturing facilities down there. We have about 8,800 8, employees. Now, to put that into perspective, we have more than 10 times that here in the United States, you know, over 85,000 employees. If you look at our sales here in the U.S., 80% of our sales here in the U.S. are made from vehicles that are made in the United States because we are the largest manufacturer of automobiles in the U.S. and the larger employer of hourly workers. Less than 13% of our, our sales here in the U.S. come from vehicles produced in Mexico. So I don't see changing, changing too much uh, at the same time. You know, it all comes down to things that we look at, uh, factors that we look at in making investments, and some of those are trade agreements, tax tax policies, things of that nature. We take that all into account. So it could affect your future plans as a practical matter. It could. It depends on it depends on how those policies are implemented. But overall, as a global multinational, which we're very proud of being a global multinational, we want to build what we sell, but also at the same time be very, very strong in our home market.